Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on The Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. I want to introduce you tonight to a recording artist from Brampton who uh, is getting a park named after him. He's a Juno Award winner uh, from 2018, I think, yeah. um, and a uh, really impressive uh, young man, Kirk Diamond. Kirk, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for having me. So why are they naming a park after you? Um, I mean, I don't even know where to start, but... It's, it's a very big deal for the community yep. and the culture that I represent, you know, which is the reggae Jamaican community. Um, and I guess because I'm from Brampton, um, I'm one of the most accomplished reggae artists from the city. Awesome. Congratulations. Right, so thank you. Um, so it's definitely an honor for not only me, but for the culture of my family. Yep. Yep. Yeah. How'd you get into being a reggae artist? Um, it chose me. It chose you. It chose me. Um, it was one of those things. When I moved to Canada, um, I was only 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And it is Canada. So there wasn't really much reggae scene that, you know, that I could see or any anything that linked me to Jamaica. Right. Um, but the music and the vibe was always here. So it kind of drew me to, 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 to that field. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be good at it. Excellent. And, uh, and and what was the, was it an album or a song that you got nominated for and won the Juno, the Juno um, for? I won for um, an EP, my first EP, yep. um, which is just a small album. And then I got nominated last year again for Let It Be Done, which you interviewed me for. Yep, yep. Yeah. And, uh, and and uh, what's what's next? Um, my debut album is coming out in May. Your debut album? Yeah. Like it's my first actual real. Well, we're gonna album. have to have you on to perform your debut album. Yeah, for sure. Fantastic. Yeah, that sounds good. So the EP, what was it? It's called Greater. Um, it was produced by. Um, it's called Mango Tree. They're a production company from Germany. Yep. Um, and they reached out to me because it's very hard to to actually conduct. You know, get the right sound for mm -hmm. reggae, mm -hmm. um, and they just happened to have it. Um, Germany has the most reggae festivals, I think, in the world, too. Germany does? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why Germany? I don't know. It's just always been between Germany and, I want to say, Spain that may have the most reggae festivals in the world. Now, when I think about reggae, I think about Bob Marley. Right. Is he the biggest reggae? Was he, like, the, the father of reggae? He's definitely the king. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. He, he, he is the... The spokesperson for reggae right um but reggae is more than just the music it is what it means um you know it's it's the the voice of the rastafari movement what um, does it mean it's a, a black liberation movement really yeah okay that's, that's what the rastafari movement is um but it's the only um movement with a spiritual nucleus what's the spiritual nucleus rastafari Haile Selassie the first mm -hmm. Um, which, you know, um, he's the king, but for the, the Rastafarians, he is our, what you would call like the Messiah or, you know, the deliverer. He's the one that spoke to us because black people really didn't have a monarch that we could look at to say, this is someone that we could look up to mm -hmm. like that on, before he came, you know, and Marcus Garvey told us that he was coming. So. We kind of looked at that, which is the same thing that Bob Marley spoke in almost every song. Yeah, yeah. And 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 when did uh, when did this occur? Um, the movement. Yeah. Um, it started in 1932. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when he was crowned the king, he was the emperor of Ethiopia. Right. Yeah. And uh, and and so that's his spiritual. That was the spiritual background for reggae and for Rastafarian. Yeah. Okay. And and other than black, black liberation, are there other tenants to uh, to Rastafarian? Um, it depends on the house. Like you know, just like Christianity, there's different denominations. Yep. 
right? Um, but some see um, Haile Selassie as being the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Some see him as being a prophet. I take him as just being a very great king. Mm -hmm. And his philosophies are something to definitely be studied, especially for pride. Um, um, for like, you know, black pride and stuff like that. I looked at his philosophy along with Marcus Garvey as well. You know, so I try to put some of their teachings into my music and just help. And just so happens that not only black people love my music, a lot of people seem to find themselves um, uplifted or inspired from the music that I sing. Why? Pardon me? Why? Why? Yeah. It's different from what you hear yep. on the radio. Um, yep. We don't hear much positivity. Like if you listen to any radio station that plays what they call urban music, 95% or even higher may be negative. It's nothing for you to actually want to listen to. So a lot of hip hop, um, which I presume as you're saying is urban music, mm -hmm. um, is very sexist and uh, misogynistic. Yeah. Uh, is that a fair? Like I, I, I would say so. Is reggae? No. It's supposed to be balanced. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's supposed to be something where we uplift women. Um, we care for them. Um, we, it's just not the same, but then you have other people that seems to try to follow the money where we have a sub genre of reggae called dancehall, or now they call it trap dancehall, which is almost like taking the modern hip hop, mixing it with Jamaican dancehall, and they try to give you the what? same type of um, rhetoric. What's dancehall? Dancehall is more of a, it's a subgenre. So after reggae came, out of reggae came dancehall. Dancehall is really the venue mm -hmm. where reggae was played, but because of it's the, the upbeat of it, it was faster than the reggae beat. Reggae is usually like a one drop, like usually slower, like Bob Marley stuff. Mm -hmm. And then if you're familiar with like Yellow Man and Super Cats and Shabba Ranks, and yep. that's dancehall. Okay. Did you watch the uh, Super Bowl halftime show? I saw a piece of it. What did you think of it? It was interesting. It's not the same to me. Like for me, because of my age group, I understood what was happening. Yeah. But like kids like my children won't ever understand what it is that they're looking at. What do you mean? So when I was, I want to say maybe seven, eight, nine, we had Dr. J, Snoop Dogg they were the pinnacle of hip-hop yep. for the west coast then when i went to high school 50 cent eminem right and then mary j Blige, of course is r b superstar like mm -hmm. from the 90s i think this generation of children their superstars are the drakes and the some may understand eminem but i think more like the drakes the tory lanes the weekend okay but I, it was different than the music it was the fact that for the first time uh -huh. you had several what was it five different uh you know stars yeah um i think the first time hip-hop and rap was ever performed at the super bowl halftime right. show and uh one of the first times you know other than maybe uh janet jackson michael jackson that you had black people that were right. performing uh, at, the, at the super bowl and and it is the highest watched tv show uh, of any it's right. like twice what uh, the <laughs> next to highest it's 90 million people in just the u.s alone right um the next highest uh, show is 40 million or something like that for uh, the divisional finals and then down to the 30 million for uh, the the inauguration of a new u.s president wow and so the <laughs> fact that you had something that was triple what an inauguration is and double mm -hmm. what the next best shows are with five hip-hop rap performers and i think part of it was because it was from Compton, uh, in, uh, in, or, you know, that, that part of Los Angeles that, mm -hmm. uh, that, um, you know, they were representing with the, right. with the backdrop. So there's the, I would have thought that would have been a, a real sense of pride for, uh, oh, definitely. For people, no? for, definitely. But like I said, I was talking more of a generational thing, not yeah, necessarily like we saw. So you think like, we should have had the weekend to Drake up there? No, not necessarily. I'm pretty sure they will. <laughs> All right. I, I'm pretty sure that they will be there. Yep. Um, for me, it was a big thing to see people that I grew up to and love their music on there. But for the younger generation, maybe not so much. Where's uh, Where's your park? 
um, in Brampton, Sandalwood and Airport Road. Yeah. Currently, it's called Shields Park. And uh, and are you so just in the next little while? It's going to be inaugurated with your name on it. Yeah. Yeah. You looking forward to it? I am. It's pretty yeah. special. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. If people want to follow your music, how do they find you? Um, at Kurt Diamond everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, are you on Spotify? And yeah, definitely Kurt Diamond on Spotify, and look for. And when you album. came in, you made a joke that I thought was a joke, but it was the, the, the truth. Your real name is Kurt Douglas. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I think they named me after Spartacus himself. <laughs> Fantastic. We're going to take a break for some messages and come back more with uh, Kurt Douglas, a.k.a. Kurt Diamond, in just a minute. The Juno Award winner, and he's getting a park in Brampton named after him. Pretty impressive. Stay with us, everybody. अगर खुशियाँ गिनने का मीटर होता तो साफ दिख जाता सऊदी अरब वाले असगर भाई की इतनी दुबई में सलमान और शाहिदा बाजी की इतनी बरतानिया से राशिद चचा और अमेरिका वाले आसिम साहब की ना सिर्फ इतनी खुशियाँ बढ़ चुकी हैं, बल्कि बढ़ती ही जा रही हैं। इन सब के साथ साथ दीगर पाकिस्तानी भी ढेरो खुशियाँ समेट रहे हैं सोनी धरती रेमिटेंस प्रोग्राम के शानदार रिवॉर्ड पॉइंट्स के साथ तो बैंक और एक्सचेंज कंपनी से रकम भेजते रहिए और हासिल करते रहे रिवॉर्ड पॉइंट्स के बदले फ्री सर्विसेज इंटरनेशनल एयर टिकट टैक्स और ड्यूटी पेमेंट शिनाख्ती दस्तावेज की रिन्यूअल इंश्योरेंस पेमेंट यूटिलिटी स्टोर ऐसी खरीदारी और बहुत सारी सहूलियाँ आज ही सोनी धरती ऐप डाउनलोड कीजिए और रजिस्टर हो जाए के आपके दम से ही है पाकिस्तान की तरक्की और खुशहाली सोनी धरती रेमिटेंस प्रोग्राम हमेशा अपनों के करीब हुकूमत पाकिस्तान स्टेट बैंक ऑफ पाकिस्तान और मालियाती इदारों की जानब से एक अहम कदम राशन तो फिर पाकिस्तान आ गया क्या करूं भाईजान इधर के काम ही नहीं खत्म होते छोटा मुंह बड़ी बात करने लगा हूँ खैर ये तो आप तकल्लफ ही कर रहे हैं बड़ी अहम बात है गौर से सुन दुबई वापस जाते ही ऑनलाइन रोशन डिजिटल अकाउंट खुलवाओ ये जो बैंक ऑफ पंजाब ने शुरू किया हुआ है हाँ स्टेट बैंक ऑफ पाकिस्तान की हदायत पर ओवरसीज पाकिस्तानियों के लिए सहूलत है इधर देख प्रदेश से घर के बिल अदा करने हो पैसे भिजवाने हो नया पाकिस्तान सर्टिफिकेट या स्टॉक मार्केट में सरमायाकारी करनी हो गाड़ी निकलवानी हो अपने घर के लिए कर्ज चाहिए हो सब हो सकता है इसके अलावा 24 घंटे ऑनलाइन बैंकिंग की सहूलत भी बस 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 मेरे सारे मसले हल हो गए बस अब शादी रह गई तो आप अभी डब्ल्यू विजिट करें और अपना रोशन डिजिटल अकाउंट बिल्कुल मुफ्त खुलवाएं बैंक ऑफ पंजाब रखे हर फर्द का ख्याल डिस्कवर दल्टीमेट साउथ एशियन फैशन एट दागे the most desirable wardrobe styling from famous pakistani designers one of the largest clothing stores in toronto plan a visit today or shop online at dagefashions.com this is your new home mira par de Try some. Mira, some chicken. Are you playing favorite? 
Are you a real estate investor or corporate real estate agent? Did you know smart real estate investors and agents have been using a virtual real estate investment financial strategy to reduce and eliminate their personal corporate and estate taxes? Call and let me show you how. Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on The Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. It's a, a real pleasure tonight to chat with uh, Kirk Diamond, who uh, is a Juno Award winner uh, for his uh, his uh, first um, EP uh, in 2018, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then got nominated again last year, and is coming out with his debut album uh, this May, uh, and uh, so important uh, to uh, his culture and to his community that he has a park being named after him in Brampton, and uh, that's got to be a real special honor. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if we can change from music um, just a little bit and talk a little bit more about uh, about um, race uh, and uh, you know you and I have talked about this before mm -hmm. um, a year ago uh, uh, what was it two years ago now I can't even remember two years ago I guess we had the George Floyd murder in uh, Minneapolis St. Paul um, and um, we had protests uh, across uh, you know the world uh, mm -hmm. in the United States and in Canada as well um, and I think for the first time we had sort of a more of an uprising than we've ever had before. You know, we had the civil rights movement uh, um, before you were born. Um, right. uh, but in the, in the civil rights movement, my perception is that it was primarily black people that were involved in the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. um, um, the protest that we had, you know, two years ago. Um, it's everybody. Everybody um, were, was involved. Um, and I really thought it was a, a change. Um, and we've had since then a couple of very critical, not in Canada necessarily, but in the United States, um, court cases of people that have uh, have have done racially charged murder and uh, been found uh, guilty. And just the fact that George Floyd's killer was found guilty of murder, um, mm -hmm. some people were surprised at, and I think that was good. How do you feel now about where we are from a, a racial standpoint in Canada and in North America? Um. Well, where we are now is, I believe, especially with the protest, the George Floyd protest that happened, I believe more people are starting to realize that we have to look at it from a humanity perspective, right? That's what we are. Um, I was listening to um, a, what do you call it, a seminar where um, this professor, I forgot her name now, where she said that racism is actually a mental health issue, right? And I, I laughed about it when I heard it, but I have to agree. I think you're right, actually. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, because there's no way someone that looks like you, you think that they're less than you because of the color of their skin, mm -hmm. right? And these are things that are taught. It's not like you're born saying, well, I don't like this person because of the color of their skin, right? And a lot of the times where I perform, there's no black people in the crowd mm -hmm. and they're all singing my songs and they're crying or they're after the shows they're hugging and stuff like that i'm like this is what it's about right so i believe things will get better with the next with the generations to come yep. um it's just takes time i think so it, that's what it's more about now the time that it will take to get there so if we want to get rid of racism, is you were talking about black liberation. Mm -hmm. um, you were talking about Rastafarian. Mm -hmm. What's the best route that we can follow in Canada to get rid of systematic racism? Be more inclusive to everybody. Mm -hmm. I think so. Like, for example, and I don't want to be like too political, but like in my um, community, we see as like, for example, the protests that just happened now the mandate protests that happened in my community we say that we could never ever have done that 
like we probably would have been stopped at killing 401 heading to Ottawa, right? So we both laughed, but it's actually not funny, right? You know, it, it, it's some, it's scary when you think about it. Like, what would have happened if it was, say, 50,000 Iranians that were on their way to the capital? Or, yeah. but I saw this interview with someone that said, you know. I just, if it wasn't a whole bunch of white people with baseball caps and hockey jerseys on, the result would have been really different. Yeah. I personally think it would have been a massacre. A massacre. Yeah, I think so. Because that is the, the um, I don't know, I want to say the climate that is portrayed to me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I, I pay close attention to it just to see what would happen. And every night I would go to my bed feeling a little bit more scared as to where it would end up, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but even with that, I found joy in seeing so much different cultures together protesting against the same common cause, whether or not, not I agree not, with it or not. Not, but, not. There wasn't lots of cultures protesting against the mandates. Um, what what I was looking at on my social media, mm -hmm. like it wasn't just white people that they were there. There were six there. There was a couple of black people there. And I know people that actually went down, even if it was for one day, just to see and witness what yeah. was happening, just to, you know. That's interesting that you have that perception and, and maybe I'm wrong. I thought it was a, like a 95, if not 99% white uh, crowd. It could, could be. I wasn't and, there. I was uh, just looking based yeah. on my timeline on my social media. Yeah. You know what I what mean? What did like, you think when you saw the Confederate flag? The Confederate flag? Yeah. Um, I only saw it once. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, I saw the, the swastika. I saw that once too. Mm -hmm. um, in a crowd of 50,000 people, you can't control who's coming. You know? Um, but one of the organizers that's in jail right now, one of the key organizers, is, mm -hmm. you probably heard him, says that uh, Anglo-Saxons are being weeded out of Canada, but de being diminished. And the Anglo-Saxon bloodline is the strongest bloodline. Like it, it's the worst, most disgusting white supremacist hate that I've ever heard. Where is he? He was one of the key organizers and he's in jail now. He's one of the three key organizers that's well, in jail. That's where he's supposed to be. He has a mental problem. Yeah. <laughs> right? He has a he has an issue. Um but and he's arrested, you said? Yep. At the same time, it's it's things like these that we can't afford to 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 pass on. So how do we stop it? We stop it. See, I think I think you know, there's this line that they used a bunch, um, you know, a few bad apples. Mm -hmm. But the whole line is a few bad apples spoils the whole bunch. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we've forgotten that. Like, and you, you, you excused it. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not attacking you here. I'm just saying you excused it based on there's only be a few people in 50,000. Mm -hmm. But I think if you see a swastika or you see a Confederate oh, you flag, you got to go up and, you know, rip it down. And you got to say, I'm not part of you. Right. You got to have backbone and stand up. And I think well, that there were that, a lot of people that knew there were white supremacists there, even fact, oh yeah. even in leadership positions, but they still went along for the ride. I wouldn't have went because it's not, I don't think it is my, you know, calling. I believe it was a movement based on privilege. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Because it has to be privilege. But if we think that, well, my culture couldn't have done that or another culture couldn't have done that. So it ha it, it's, it's a privilege move. So what do we do to get rid of um, anti-black racism and hate in Canada? Inclusivity, but it has to be the right one. It can't be, you have people that are just like, in Jamaica we say figurines. Is there, is there another word for them? I don't know. Like, what do you call it? Like small statues that you yeah. have. They're just there, um, a token person. We can't have any of them because they don't mean whoever they're supposed to represent any good either, right? Um, I always, um, when I think about people like that, I think of a quote that Marcus Garvey said, where he said that he doesn't, because his whole thing was repatriation back to Africa. Mm -hmm. And he said that he doesn't believe 
he should bring everybody back, every black person back to Africa because not every black person means black people any good mm -hmm. here. So they won't mean them any good there. And I believe that we will have a few of those people trying to be in position, but they won't mean us any good. Yep. So it has to be about getting the right person or the right people included that has everybody's best interests at heart, not just one group or two group. It has to be everybody. Well, I think you have a really important role to play. Um, and so I've done a bunch of studies on this. And it's interesting. If people play soccer with people that look differently mm -hmm. than them, if they join a choir mm -hmm. with people that look differently than them, if they enjoy music mm -hmm. of people that uh, are of a different uh, religion or race, um, they, in all those things, people feel more accepting of the other. Right. And they feel more included. Well, and that's the thing with, with, with music. It's the most inclusive thing you could find. I mean, even with sports, soccer, there's always one team against another. Basketball, there's one team against another. Music is the only thing that I see more than religion, more than politics, more than sports, that everyone can be together. together without picking a side. We are there under one accord, under one And so body. that's why I think that you can play a really important role because and, people are exposed to your reggae music mm -hmm. and, and enjoy it and appreciate it. Right. And uh, and come out and uh, support you, uh, and see that you're a great guy, and that you've got fantastic views and very supportive, positive, optimistic views, spiritual yeah. views. Yeah. That's got to be the best example you can imagine. And that's what I do. I don't I don't go off script to talk about anything else other than love and unity amongst everybody. Right? Because I look at it like this. Right? If you're supposed to have a garden. You're not planting one flowers alone in that garden. You want to have a few lilies or tulips and roses and stuff like that. And then you sit back and say, what a beautiful garden. Isn't it weird that people cannot look into the world and see black people, white people, Asian people and say, oh my gosh, what a beautiful world. I think you can. Not enough people do. And I think it's because too often we don't get exposed to other people's music. We don't right. get exposed to other people's religions. We don't get exposed to other people's ethnic foods, mm -hmm. um, and we've got to take that opportunity. And like, how boring would life be if you had roast beef and potatoes all the time, right? Like, <laughs> it's, it's wonderful to have, uh, to have Chinese food and uh, sushi and yeah. uh, Italian food and uh, to enjoy reggae music, pop music, rock music, hip hop, symphonies, opera, etc. Yeah. And so I think you are playing a critically important role and I thank you for that. And congratulations on the part. Thank you. I appreciate it. And you promised me you're going to come back and perform I will. when uh, the uh, debut album comes out. I will. Oh, and just to correct me, it wasn't 1932 that Haile Selassie was crowned. It was 1930. We'll, we'll give you that one. You're right. <laughs> Kirk Diamond, Juno Award winner 2018, coming out with his debut album in, uh, in a, just a few months. Check this guy out. Kirk Diamond. He's worth listening to. Thanks, everyone. आज ही सोनी धरती ऐप डाउनलोड कीजिए और रजिस्टर हो जाइए क्योंकि आपके